easy all in out of the rain this morning. And that wasn't a fudge if it's raining it. <laughs> surface and flying along where yeah. a lot of even willies got it now it would be as deep if not deeper than that. It's uh, like getting a bit quicker then too now. It takes, it'll take us a while to get up to that level of work, you'd have to bring them there slowly but yeah when they're doing that they're, they're a fair level of fitness to be yeah. running on that soft and heavy so ground. As quick as I've seen up close like that on something like that, that yeah, deep anyway. Yeah yeah it's uh no it's suits to get that level of fitness into them for the winter. Local track, uh, only one ride, so we'll do it a few more than that, but we'll give it a shot and see. Yeah. Yeah. Some good racing to be fair, isn't it? In a nice small field, then two graded races on the horizon. Yeah, they are. Um, I suppose it'll be good to see Mellon get back to winning ways. He, he hasn't won for a long time, but he's run some great races. And uh, the heart will, the heart will be competitive. Uh, Hopefully a few of those will be trying to lay down a marker for Chelsea and that, so uh, it's a race. I think Char uh, Hardy Eustis has won a few times before he went on to uh, win the champion hurdle, so can throw up a few results, all right, that one. Just about the right amount of time between now and Chelsea as well, isn't it? Just yeah, just that four, four weeks out. Yeah. Yes, he always wanted to do to be a jockey. He said, you know, even I struggled to keep him in school, but you know, he was good at school. But even the teachers had a little bit of trouble with him trying to keep him in school. Um, but he, he always just wanted to do horses, horses, and you know, he boarded in Kilkenny College for two years, and then he said, I, I could come home and help you. No, Danny, you're staying there. You're staying there. So I got him as far as he done his intercert. He got a good in. But he wasn't going back after that, so then he, he was riding all the time. And then he went to Jim Bulger's, so he did, and he loved it there. But he just was so into it all his life, just so focused and into it. And you must be proud of him. He's had a particularly good season, this one, winning the King George. Oh, that was fabulous. Yeah, and it was great to win that. Um, yeah, he's had a great. He won the Tiestas there two years ago, which was fabulous, a local one to win. Yeah, and it's great. And heading to Cheltenham, we should have some decent rides, Florian Porter and maybe Tony Edo no, fly again. And yeah, I'm sure, it's all down to the last, down to the declaration time. He know then what he's riding, so hopefully it'll go well for him and get home safe. And yeah. Do you ever get nervous watching him? Obviously, you've rode and stuff yourself, so you know what the dangers are. But well, I'm, yes, and you do know the dangers, but you still get nervous. But look, I don't say anything. I keep quiet. And <laughs> kind of close my eyes sometimes. And but look, um, it's great. It's a, it's a great game and. Every day they walk back in that door and come home, it's great, you know. We're on the chase track now and I suppose like you're, you're just looking, if you come over here you'll see the last day, see where the few bits of sand are and that yeah. uh, there would have been 
racing on that ground the last day so it's just trying to find a nice fresh sod of um, racing ground and look for a nice clean run round so that's I'm riding in the handicap chase today and on a handicapper you can play around a little bit more where you know on the novices and that you just have to get them into a rhythm jumping and ride the horse but on handicappers you have a little bit more leeway as to what you can do to, to find a little edge so this morning I was riding work in Willies and then from there my house is on the way towards Clonmel so it was grand I popped home grabbed a shower came on down and I was second in the grade two novice hurdle earlier on a horse called Ivan so that was a good run from him and I've one more ride left so hopefully I have a chance in the handicap chase later on. little bit lower back tension apart from that in good shape yeah uh, in the back more on right than left or fairly central fairly central a little bit on the right and episode or just gradual onset gradual onset yeah. and for the gym and iron no I, i've been doing fairly well deadlift and i got it up to 110 Okay, yeah. Yeah, I seems And no one is out of that? No. Lovely. No. Uh, chin up and press up and all that? Chin up's perfect, yeah. Doing plenty of them with the weights on my back, uh, band over, 15 kgs, doing yeah. the chin ups and that. No problem. Seems, yeah, good. Strong as that. Would you have a screen for a jump up on? Yeah. Body quiet and just pull the arms across. Four, three, two, one. Lovely. Uh, five sets, three chin ups, and then without weights, uh, it's at one, three, five with the 15 kg, and yeah. then two and four without weights going pull ups. Show me the pull ups first then. Yeah, come on. Yeah, can I do that? Spot on. And um, your only little thing is that when you're in that position, and you, you, once you get into your rhythm, you're fine. But I just start. You, you're lovely here. But yeah. Sometimes just it's just taking that second to connect before you pull. Yeah. And bring it in. Other than that, perfect. Top class. Rip before you go. There you go. Lock in. Yeah. So as you're there, you're doing lovely. You're coming up, lovely, lovely, yeah. lovely. 
And then the last bit's a little bit that. Okay. You want to be in. Chin tucked and all. And see the way they're back in set. Yeah, yeah. You just want to back down a little bit. Yeah. Don't shoot one there without it. Just bring them home there. Yeah. Feel the difference? Yeah. More? Like it's, it's not about the pull because you're strong enough to get up there. Yeah. It's just like the top of the deadlift, just setting that deadlift yeah. position. Yeah. Here on the pop. Lovely. And again, control for three, two, one, pop. Lovely. Last two, three, keep me out. Ah, lovely. Pop. And last one, three. As you'll find in terms of lifting and technique, uh, really good. All we're really trying to do is suppose twofold at this time of year. It's not really about gains. It's just about maintaining the improvements that we've made. You know, you don't want to be doing heavy training this time of year enough to keep the body going. And then, you know, an occupational hazard is you'll have bumps and bruises, A, from the workload and travel, and then B, from the odd tumble. Um, so really we're looking to do is trying to iron out any creases that might come just from the nature of, of, of tumble and fall, etc. Um, and then if we have any bit of a history, whether that's old knee injury, etc., just trying to keep a little bit of our extra work around here. You'll have seen us do a little bit on the tummy, a little bit around the hips, just to keep the low back happy. Again, it's not an issue, but to be ahead of it. And, and then Danny moves really well. You can see in a squat, you see his chin up, like he's very, very strong. I've been very diligent. Um, so again, it's about making him strong in the positions relative to racing, and then making him strong that the odd time he does have to bounce off the ground, that there's a, there's a bit of wiggle room in it. So uh, no, we're, we're in good shape. Onwards and upwards. Perfect. Yeah. Good man. What's Danny like? Thanks, Billy. <laughs> uh, compliant to a fault. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's definitely it's trying to keep him entertained and pushing the thing on is, is yeah. huge. Like uh, he moves incredibly well, um, you know, and has had a, a couple of, of, of previous nasty units but recovered very, very well with them. Um, you'll see physique wise in incredible shape, um, lifts really well, very, very strong relative to body weight. So it's about not necessarily um, you know, managing old injuries, it's just keeping them strong, keeping them, adding variety to what we're doing. Long season, you know, so people get stale mentally and physically. So how can we acknowledge the fact that the racing calendar is busy, especially this time of year, while making sure that we're continuing to maintain the, the, the gains we've made over the close season and push things on. But as are most, to be honest with you, like anyone that is coming in when they're not injured to stay ahead of it. I mean, the mentality alone tells you what you need to know. Um, it's about not only just making sure I recover from this injury, but that I minimise my chance the next one will let me perform the best. Uh, and Danny's epitomised that. So, and uh, I think the rewards are, are coming on the track as well. So, onwards and upwards. I suppose I wouldn't be coming here on race days or that, but like for the likes of this morning, the better you get at minding your weight, you know what the healthy options are. I mean, you're having the hot chocolate, I'd love one of those, yeah. but <laughs> just uh, try to keep them down a little bit. But you know, after after a busy day's racing, I'd love to go home, sit down with a hot chocolate or that, and chill out. But Early in the morning, I try and eat well. It gives you a little bit more energy for the day as well. Like when you're on the go, you can't you prepare what you're going to eat because obviously you're up and down in the kites. You're not going to microwave or enough to cook yourself something up. So not really. I suppose I'd have a bit of breakfast. You know, I'd um, drink a bit of water in the morning, grab an apple protein pouch on the way out the door in the morning and I I bring some porridge with me for mid morning and then after that you know you're, you're just hoping you can get somewhere to get a healthy bit of food on the road the race courses in Ireland have got a lot better in the last few years they have much better canteens and it's much easier to eat maybe like an athlete rather than just getting chippers and all that you know that takes its toll on you after a while. Do you, ever, do you read in some time you just think oh just go and eat a big fry up or something or have you just got used to the fact that you're an athlete that's how it is and that's how you get success from eating clean? Yeah I suppose you you do get used to it and every so often I suppose that you have to break out and you know have a big fry in the morning but if you keep it to a minimum I suppose it, it makes life easier on the other end when you're standing on the scales and trying to keep yourself right yeah I'm lucky enough I maybe don't ride as many lightweights as I used to 
and I'm getting good rides in some of the better races. So once I keep fit and keep my weight in reasonable check, uh, I'm, I'm not too bad in that regard. And what's that your guilty pleasure? What, what's the one thing that you can't live without? Oh, chocolate. Yeah, yeah, definitely chocolate. Um, I've got better at cutting it down, but still love the chocolate. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's that's the main thing. So when you, you win a big race, it's a barrel of chocolate on the way home rather than a, a bottle of champagne. Yeah, there's nothing, nothing in the bottle that'd make it any better for me. Now, me chilling out with a bar of chocolate, and maybe a hot chocolate as well. That's a that's a celebration for me. Oh, I'd, I'd listen to audiobooks. Yeah, yeah. Reading, no, I just. Too busy. Wouldn't do it, yeah. Sunbed now is probably where, or sun lounger yeah, by yeah. the pool. Yeah, same thing. But that would be as exciting as I get. The cookbooks. It'll be great. Yeah. Have we had enough funny suckle already? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah. Well. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah.
there and keep a bit of contact with the, the head and then that kind of... How do you hold the reins over your fingers off? So I allow this, uh, I'll go for a single bridge. Okay, yeah. Go leave your baby finger out. Yeah. And I usually put the bridge on the opposite side to my whip. Okay. And here, some people ride with a double bridge. Yeah. I, I just think a single bridge suits me better. Yeah. So yeah, you have two so. two reins this side and one this side. Yeah. So like that, with yeah. that finger left out. Yeah. With the one underneath or just underneath. Underneath, yeah. Underneath, yeah. And then you're the same on this side with the baby finger. Like that. Yeah. Left out. Uh, oh. Yeah. And stand up. We get there. We go. Just start to feel it in the legs. Yeah. Go a bit faster. Go on, yeah. And you want to be trying to keep all the weight in your heels. Yeah. yeah. Try to keep the heels down. And even if you can try and get your hands off his neck. Yeah. And hold the reins. Yeah. yeah. Slow it down a bit. Yeah. Grab, you, grab the reins. Yeah. So yeah, I bet you just tighten up the reins, yeah. There and now you know the way Endo was showing me this morning yeah. about keeping my knees out. Yeah. That's why he does an awful lot of work putting the muscles here for yeah. the glutes and that. that. So as you can get keep the heels down and get get to do that so you're working everything. Yeah. at your proper base, like even uh, now you get a few minutes on that and yeah, yeah. you can feel yeah, the like muscles, yeah. So how do you manage to keep the reins like that and not it's, want to rest them there? So if you stand up there now yeah. and you want to get, get everything back, bring yeah. your body and even your there, so everything is working off okay, here yeah. and here yeah, yeah. and then like your that's basically your steering wheel here okay, yeah. and your accelerator is here yeah so you, you squeeze in there yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so like yeah, it's even signing in that position it's hard, isn't it? yeah yeah it's to, to hold it down yeah and i suppose what it's what we're conditioned to to do yeah yeah uh it's getting to that level of fitness so where you're there so strong now like and even when a horse makes a mistake having the core strength and yeah, yeah, a lot so of the stuff that end up doing so so your body is just totally moves around to what the horse is doing underneath you. Yeah yeah. So yeah. give it a go again. Go on yeah I'll try and sort of yeah. like that. Yeah. And then keep the heels down. Yeah yeah. 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 Pretty pretty much like nearly a rugby player going into a scrum. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You're, yeah. you're there rather than leaning forward because your centre of gravity has gone too far yeah. forward then. Yeah, yeah, perfect. And yeah, keep keep a good hold on him yeah. all the time. Now you're getting it. And it's using your legs as a suspension. Yeah. To keep your your body and, and you can keep your head straight to, to be thinking about what's coming at you. Yeah. Yeah, when, when you get into it, like yeah. even now that you're in the position you want to be, yeah. is to hold that yeah, yeah. and keep going. And this is just going round in a race to this side yeah. of the temple. Yeah, like that's probably even going to the start. For yeah, yeah. I'll give you, before you get too tired, I'll get you up to full speed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so hard to do a lot. It's I suppose once you've been doing it for a good deal of time yeah, you're used to it, yeah. but 
to get to that fitness level, especially coming back from the likes of injuries and stuff, yeah, yeah, to bring you back to that race fitness again, it, it's and tough to go to, get to a finish from that. Like, yeah, yeah, to get down, go, go change your whip, yeah. and yeah. How do you then change to do that? Uh, so that's why you the old, mind, yeah, then. the old fashioned way would have been, we'll say, like there, and then pull it through like that. Yeah. But I, I think in a finish, uh, it's just when the whip is up, it's probably the, what the American jockeys would have done. It's just much easier to grab and pull through and go and pull back this way where yeah. you don't lose a half second going down over and flick through again, where if you're just passing it over and, and passing it back like that. Yeah. And, and just regroup your reins and go again. Yeah, so much to think about, innit? Yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable. Because like someone like Frankie Vittoria has it like wafting out here, doesn't he? And yeah, then, yeah. Whereas most people are in there, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, yeah. Right. And then some do that though, sometimes. Yeah, yeah. That's just basically yeah, a little encouraging. Wake up for yeah. them and run again then. Jump, yeah, so. Um, Jumping, you as, if you think of like a pendulum, as the horse goes up, yeah, and so your your foot will be here, yeah. As the horse rises, yeah, you want your foot back here, so as you you're okay, yeah. directly, and you just move around the horse without upsetting the horse's balance, yeah. and then as it's landing, your foot will come slightly forward, yeah. So so like your tucked in a little to go forward yeah. and a little back as you land yeah, yeah. but as you're doing that you want to move as little as you can not to upset the horse's balance yeah. but then if a horse makes a mistake and goes too far in one way you have to be able to react to stay in the saddle as well yeah. it's mad yeah more pressure on yourself than with having obviously winning the King George you, you go yeah. okay, yeah. sort of, there's not really a list there but you know what I mean it's in like your profile's been heightened by successes like that you a few more eyes looking at you and talking about you I don't particularly feel like there's any more pressure on me but I think it might have opened up more doors for me to, you know, hopefully get better rides in those bigger races where I'm at, I suppose at this point in my career I was lucky enough like even last year in Cheltenham, Florin Porter was a spare ride to win the stairs hurdle and the more you're performing on that big stage the more trainers and owners want you riding for them in those races so just to keep winning when you get the opportunities is important to let it snowball forward and, and hopefully build more year on year. Really it's about building the profile to be able to win those big races regularly. You know I, I'm I ride a lot for Willie and have a lot of small trainers and you know my parents uh, and that as well but it, I'm pretty much a, a freelance rider and it's trying to capitalise and keep it busy all the time you know <clears throat> we've Dublin Festival has just passed and Cheltenham is coming up and it's trying to get on good horses for all those big festivals and days in between you're keeping busy and fit and trying to ride winners day in day out at the smaller meetings as well and you know while the big days are, are the ones I really love winning at it's very important to perform at the meetings leading up to those big days as well because you know that they're, they're the reason you know a lot of people want you riding on the bigger days if you're able to win on the small days as well it opens up those doors when you book your rides you have a, an agent or does willie tell you what you're, you're riding or is it willie leaves it fairly late to tell you what you're riding for him but um 
Ken Whelan is my agent and he'll he'll be going through will maybe entries for the weekend come out on a Tuesday myself and Ken will have a chat Tuesday evening about what horses are where uh, which ones are possible rides and he'll be in touch all the time with the trainers and if there's trainers that want me to go and school a horse uh, I'll go give them jump over hurdles or fences write a bit of work uh, I'll fit that into my schedule maybe around being in Willie's like I'd be in Willie's Tuesday Thursday Saturday so they're the three work mornings and if you know there's we don't have as much racing in Ireland so there's a couple of afternoons a week where you have an opportunity to go and, and sit in a horse that might be running in a couple of weeks time and just yeah open those doors for yourself reading a few bits and yeah 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 it just oh, adds yeah. yeah it is always the reading is it though yeah like, when you're in a car i've been saying like say the, with the footballers and hurdlers they're like can we do another one and you're like no not really there's no point to do another one until you've to put a good block of pre-season in which is yeah. exactly what they've yeah. done but uh yeah it's just really interesting how the different interests it's just more kind of yeah um but yeah that's that's about the height really eight minutes yeah Yeah, that's the one. I'm gonna relax. Perfect, yeah. So same as always, this just four four-ish minutes, just stay as yeah. as you can. Alright? Perfect. So good. Three, two, one. And you're throwing the trousers or whatever else. Cool. My composition one. Um so as you say we've done five in there at this stage. Yeah. Uh, body mass is gonna yeah f since our first ever one it's 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 a little bit higher but body fat percentage is nearly yeah it's the lowest it's ever been yeah positive signs and so we know that i guess as i've done previously if you know your body fat percentage is the lowest ever been and weight is the highest yeah, yeah not highest but it's it's high enough it, it suggests that you've lost fat mass which is exactly what you've done so you've been in and around that sort of seven ish kilos of fat mass here mm -hmm. six and a half again so that's a fairly significant drop from 7.2 kilos down to 6.5 now it's not a full kilo yeah but in terms of pounds you're looking at what the best part of two two ish pounds yeah yeah of fat mass and then muscle mass stayed fairly constant i think that stayed reasonably constant again like 300 grams isn't significant enough to say there's a change when i yeah. say significant enough i mean if we did the scan again and again and again you'd get something in them yeah between yeah those two um, but that is that's reasonably significant to know that the, the fat mass has come down yeah. of composition to translate into performance and the yeah, hardest yeah. thing is for again I say us to be able to say like doing a deck scan minding yourself the way you are does that give you a competitive advantage yeah. over the rest yeah, um, yeah. I don't know you, you might be able to back it up in your own anecdotal words but whether it stands up to you know the lads in the, in the weigh room who like do they there's going to be some who are very diligent and then there's going to be some that are just you're more durable, yes. maybe. Yeah, it, the better you are for the likes of the, the more dur durable you are through a season. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. then like you get a fall before Christmas or something, and you're you're recovered, bang, and you're performing yeah, next yeah. week yeah, at the highest level again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it, well, it, that, it yeah. can keep you at a constant where I think that stands up to it. Yeah, I think anybody with natural talent for a horse can get up and go and do a job today. Yeah, but then. To stay on the hamster wheel the whole time, nice. yeah, you have yeah, to keep yeah. yourself in. That's, and that's where, yeah, I think that that comes into it for us. I think it does because, like, again, it's very really, like that's the thing. Is, that's is there any horse you've, you've sat on at home that you thought this is going to be a, a world beater, and then it gets to the race course and it shows anything but what you've seen at home? Yeah, there's plenty of them, you know, especially with bumper horses and the maybe ones coming off the flat that are going to run in novice hurdles and maiden hurdles they, they can often be very flashy at home and just not deliver uh, once they get to the track and you know you, you also have the ones that show very little at home and then pop up and win good races and you know there's there's no prize money at home so it's all about what they do on the track really and with it being so hard to judge some of the horses i suppose that's uh, left opportunities in 
Willie's where Willie will run any horse he thinks deserves their crack at the, the graded races and you see like Dublin Festival, Leopardstown at Christmas, Punchestown, Cheltenham, all those meetings. He'll have multiple runners in the good races and especially early in the season it can be very hard for Paul to pick the right one and quite often I can get on a, a very good horse there and you know, I bag a big race. So the, the Willie Mullins bingo that gets banded around it is true for even for you as the jockeys you don't know until the last minute what you're going to be riding. Yeah definitely you know it, it probably it frustrates uh, Ken the most trying to organise other rides for me uh, because Willie just leaves it so late deciding which meetings he wants us to go to at Christmas or you know which horses he, he'll want us riding in, in some of the other races and that but that's just something I suppose you get used to and it, it works very well for Willie and I get to ride plenty of the good horses the fact that he, he's pitting them all in there against each other so um, happy enough with it and obviously as a, a jockey you can end up anywhere any day really across the country is it what's it like when you're just in the car like obviously you are now but I imagine a lot of time you're just on your own you might have had a, 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 a rubbish day where it hasn't gone the way that you thought it might do and then you've got a long trek back how's it how do you cope with that mentally yeah i suppose yeah even if, you, if you've had a bad day somewhere you know watch the race back figure out what went wrong and why it went wrong and how you're going to change it the next day and once you've gone through that process you park it there you do what needs to be done to get it right and uh, move on you know some some days are are bigger than others and you know there there's differences in it but you know racing is a game you can't live in the past you know it's all about what you're doing for the future and you know you, you'll have good and bad days but you just need to learn move on and go again a lot of people started doing it and thinking that they could do it themselves yeah but I always had say maybe one winner from home yeah. that I thought was going to win. Or uh, not that my husband ever said uh, <laughs> he, he would never tip anything. Isn't that true? You're probably good enough at reading the signs, though. The, <laughs> <laughs> the other well, little well, signs. Well, I used to ride, be riding work, and uh, I know the one that was going well. You know that was that was chopping out at the end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, were, they were doing their final bit of work yeah. for the races. You know. You were sharp enough in the morning <laughs> to pick them out. Yeah, well, uh, when you're there every day, and uh, all the boys were at school and all that sort of thing, uh, it was very easy to uh, pick the good one. Well, he would tell me that the horse that was the good one. Well, he's, I think he's an excellent jockey, and he's able to put his horses at the fences all the time. You never see him pulling back, and that is a great sign. Uh, uh, they have, uh, he has confidence whether it's going to be good and I don't think he has too many falls either uh, and um, he also must he and his mother used to know the form of the horses too you look into their breeding and that gives you a great chance of knowing you, you know when you get outside rides you have no chance of trying the horse at any stage but then if you know their breeding and how they're bred, uh, it's a great help. You tweeted that Danny was riding like a, yeah. a champion yeah. in the making. <clears throat> I just thought that the, you know, I was really impressed with the, the ride on Tornado, Tornado Flyer. Uh, I could see I was watching it down at Limerick Races that day. And I said to somebody before halfway, I said, I know the way Danny is sitting, he thinks he has control of the race. Because at this stage, he was 28 to 1, and we thought, uh, you know, it would be great to be placed. But I know the way he rides, and I knew <clears throat> before we got halfway down the back that his, his seat in the saddle told me that he felt he was in control of the race. 
So I was actually excited a long way before we got into the street, you know. So um, that ride, and then I thought at the Dublin Festival, the ride he gave uh, Manila Crooner. Again, now instead of riding from behind, he was out in front. And uh, as I watched the race after the third horror, I knew again, with a completely different type of ride, I knew by the seat of Danny in the saddle that he felt he was in control of the race again. And um, <coughs> I don't know if anyone else knows it, but I notice when uh, Danny feels like he has control of the race. Hello, how are you? That. Um, his 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 sea changes and his confidence. I know the way he rides. You know, unfortunately, too many times I know I'm beat before halfway. But anyway, so um, I just thought that that ride on <coughs> Manila Crooner was exceptional because he completely controlled the race on an outsider. A lot of lads do these things on favourites and they know they're the best horse in the race, but to to be on an outsider and you know hoping to get placed and then a long long way from home to know you're in control and you're going to win the race that to, to me takes a special jockey and Danny has developed into that type of jockey Every day we're getting a little bit closer to Cheltenham and I suppose that's our next big target. Hopefully get a few winners on the board between now and then and keep the ball rolling. Do you still get the buzz for the festival? You've been there now and won races there but does that fire still burn to get more? Yeah definitely, that fire will be burning for a long time yet. Uh, it's a magical place, Cheltenham, so yeah it's uh, an exciting time of the year.